Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be doing the booktube newbie tag and I'm not really a newbie to booktube, I've been doing this since July of last year, but I thought I'd do a proper introduction since I haven't really done one of those yet. So without further ado, let me minimize this camera recorder and let's get started. Question 1. Why start this channel? I've been watching booktube since I was in my freshman year of high school, which was a while ago now, and I first started watching the channel Jenna Moresi, as well as Overly Sarcastic Productions, Hello Future Me, among many others, uh, Shailen Wrights uh, with Readsy, um, and I was really inspired by all of their work, and they're some of the channels that first taught me how to write. So I've always loved the author to booktube side of uh, the internet, and that's still a lot of my YouTube consumption, actually. I have been running a blog and maintaining an online writer presence for several years now, but I decided to make the switch to YouTube because I realized that it would help me get a lot more reach, and I thought it would be a more dynamic way of hosting my interviews than just through a Discord chat and posting the transcripts on my blog. I still do post transcripts on my blog if people like to read them more than watch them, but I thought that it would be a fun way to get some more interaction in the book community by interviewing authors as well as talking about their books. So my YouTube channel is less about doing book reviews and freeform talking about books and it's more about connecting with authors and asking them about their stories and bringing the author perspective to booktube. The second question is, what are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? So I kind of started to answer that already by saying I do author interviews. I'm an indie author myself. I'm hoping to publish my first book, Runaways, next year. It's a middle grade fantasy novel about a girl trying to rescue her sister from the Fae. So I'll be talking a bit about that as well, but I want to reach out to other indie authors and boost them up using my platform and help them connect to their audiences as well. So all of the books that are up here on this section of my shelf are all indie authors that are friends of mine from Tumblr or from Instagram or people that I have interviewed on this channel. And so I love being able to spotlight my fellow writers um, and being able to bring their perspectives and the behind the scenes of the stories to BookTube because so often we see the reviewer side of things um, and I love the behind the scenes of what goes into a story as well. Uh, all the inspirations and the um, other details that don't necessarily always make it into the stories, the symbolism and the songs behind the characters and all of that sort of thing. So if you read a book and you want to learn more about what went into it, this is the channel to come to. Question three, what are you most excited about for this new channel? I think I'm most excited to get to know new authors. Um, something that happened at the end of last year was that I got to know Amanda Aller, um, who wrote these two books, Daughter of the Sun and Children of the Earth. And I didn't know her personally as a friend, um, like I knew, I knew Katie. Katie's been one of my best friends on Tumblr for forever. So when I asked Katie to do an interview, it wasn't that intimidating um, because we're pretty good friends already. Um, but I didn't know Amanda that well. So cold calling her and like slipping into her DMs and being like, hey, can, can I interview you? is like fangirl mode. Um, <laughs> But it was a really, really awesome opportunity because Amanda shouted me out and that gave me the opportunity to talk to a bunch of other really cool people like Emma Hill and Addison Horner who ended up being my editor for Runaways. So getting the chance to connect to other writers and getting to meet new people has been really amazing. And so I'm looking forward to doing a lot of that um, as I do more interviews. I'm not doing one this month um, because I am drowning in edits for Runaways, but um, this upcoming month I'm going to be doing an interview with Jordan King, who's somebody I met at a local book festival, and so I'm just getting to know more of the writing community and networking more, and I think that's really important to build up community in the world of algorithms and trends and chasing after what publishing companies push at us, is to follow um, word of mouth recommendations and what people are excited to recommend um, that pe their friends have written and 
um, and that sort of thing because it's not just algorithmically generated, it's stuff that people are actually excited about. And building up a real face-to-face, -face, person person community is something that we can all help to do by leaving reviews and talking about these books, um, especially in the indie community. So I'm excited to help contribute to that. Question four is, why do you love reading? And that I would answer, why do you love breathing? Um, or eating? Or drinking water? It's something I have to do and love to do. Um, as much as writing is a compulsion for me, it's a creative act that is as intrinsic to me as living is. Um, that isn't to say I don't get into books sometimes, like I do. I got into a really bad book slump in college when I was overwhelmed with school, but I love the escapism that comes with reading, I love the human connection that comes with reading a book that was written hundreds of years ago, any of these classics, and connecting to people that lived hundreds of years ago, and realizing that they had the same experiences that we did. I love learning new things, I love seeing other people's imagination and all of the cool world building that they come up with. I love seeing the themes that people are able to work into their stories. Um, what's not to love about reading? Question five is what book series got me into reading? And I'm not sure I have an answer for this because I've been reading since I was a really little kid. Um, my mom taught me how to read when I was two or three or four or five, I don't remember. I was reading Magic Tree House books on my own by the time I was five. I remember Magic Tree House was the first series that I really got into on my own, but um, there were definitely books before that that I remember loving. Um, Good Night Moon, I remember was a bedtime story that my mom would read to me um, when I was really little. And so there were many stories over the years um, if I had to say there was one series that got me into writing, um, it might be The Chronicles of Prydane, because it's kind of a Tolkien knockoff, but it's not a Tolkien knockoff. It's very well written, um, and the themes are really good, and the characters are very compelling, and it's a lot of fun. Um, Disney made a really bad movie adaptation called The Black Cauldron, which I hate, but I read that when I was in elementary school, and I was like, I could do that and I came up with my Ship of Theseus, The Lego Chronicles, which will never be finished. Um, so the book series that inspired me to write might be The Chronicles of Prydain, that might have inspired my love of fantasy, along with Tolkien, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure what inspired my love of reading as a whole. Question number six is, if you could, what question would you ask your favorite booktubers? So my favorite booktubers would probably be Daniel Green and Hello Future Me. They don't just do books, but that's kind of the main thing that they do. And I think my question to them would be, how on earth do you keep up with the trends? I have not been able to follow pop culture for like the past 50 years. I'm still catching up on classics. Sanderson is impossible to keep up with, like, the secret projects. I'm still three books behind, much less Stormlight itself and Mistborn. I only finished the first trilogy and there's like a third one coming out. There's so much modern fantasy I haven't even touched, so much sci-fi I haven't even touched. I, much less, I haven't touched the, like, romanticy book talk trends with a ten-foot pole. There's just so much output happening on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And it's amazing to see how much people are creating and that we have such a, um, such a, what's the word I'm looking for? The publishing industry is at a state where so many people can be putting out so many books. Um, and that there is so much content to be able to keep up with. It's wonderful that we live in an age where there's so many books to be had, <laughs> if that makes any sense. We live in a golden age of publishing where there is so much more literature than there ever has been in the course of human history to get your hands on, and it's wonderful. 
but there is so much to keep up with and I don't know how you do it. I mean, of course it's your full-time job, but I am still struggling here in a nine to five, but I see these people with their TBRs and their Goodreads lists of hundreds of books a year. And I'm, even when I'm listening to audiobooks in my lab job all day, I'm still making like 30 books a year. It's like, how do you do it? So I'm gonna try and do like one book a month on this channel if possible, and that's going to be a struggle. So I guess time management, <laughs> um, and also keeping your interest aligned with the trends. Like if you're not interested in what's currently trending, then how do you battle the urge to keep up with the algorithm versus follow what you're actually interested in? But such is the such is the plight of any social media content creator, I guess. Um, yeah. Question seven is what challenges do you think will be the hardest to overcome when starting a booktube? Um, I briefly mentioned it before, time management. Uh, I have a full-time job, I'm working on publishing my own book next year, so when it comes to the grand scheme of thing, doing the writing takes a higher priority than doing the author platforming. Um, at the end of the day, if I need to get the words done, then not getting a blog post is going to happen. Um, not get, I'm not going to get a blog post up that week, uh, or I'll have to take a hiatus. I've got a lot of stuff going on in my real life right now with my job and my personal life and my family, um, and so time management will be a big factor, um, just making sure I can actually sit down and read the books by my deadlines, um, and scheduling out the interviews on time, managing other authors' schedules, so time management will be a big factor. Um, and not disappointing other people because I know there's a really large backlog of books that I'd like to get to and people ask me, hey, can you feature me in an interview? And I'm like, are you okay with waiting a year? Um, and I definitely want to make sure I don't miss anybody and I don't want to disappoint anyone. Um, but I also just have a lot of money on my plate right now. So um, that's definitely a balancing act to be had and I really thank everybody for their patience with me as I try and find that balance. Question nine, where do you read? I mostly read audiobooks. I work in a lab, I'm a scientist, a uh, chemical engineer specifically, um, and so I work in like a research and development facility, and so I'm in the lab a lot, and since I'm doing stuff with my hands all the time, um, sometimes my tests can get kind of tedious, and once I know what I'm doing, it doesn't take a lot of braining to stay focused. And so I can put in earbuds and just listen to an audiobook while I'm running through my test for the day. And so I listen to a lot of audiobooks that way, and that's how I do most of my reading. Um, when I'm at home, that's when I focus on getting my writing done um, and spending time with my fiance, spending time with my friends over Discord calls, calling my family since I live far away from home now and doing other activities. So I don't spend a lot of time actually reading the books that you see. Here on my shelf. These are just the ones that I have for sentimental purposes or that I bought to support indie authors or just things that I brought from home. So I don't actually spend a lot of time reading here at home. I mostly do audiobooks at work or in the car on my commute. Question 10. What kind of books do you like to read? My favorite genre is fantasy. So I primarily read uh, young adult and middle grade fantasy, but also adult fantasy. I like books that don't have romance primarily, though there, I have read several books that have romantic subplots. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the romanticy genre, but I'll give it a try if one of my indie friends is writing it. Um, I also really enjoy sci-fi. I've not read broadly in that genre, but I've dabbled a bit in it. I read Dune for nerd homework recently, um, but I really like Bradbury. I love reading classics. I think it's really interesting to read stories that were written a long time ago to see those kind of perspectives. Um, so I have a number of those here. I love Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. Um, Sanderson is one of my favorite fantasy authors right now, but I am getting a little bit burnt out on his work just because there's simply so much of it. Um, 
and I read a lot of indie books um, because I'm an indie author myself. And so uh, most of my TBR right now is a backlog of indie books that I am trying to get through for the sake of interviews. Um, but really, I'll give anything a shot. I try to read broadly. I am trying to expand my horizons in order to um, learn different genres and expand my prose writing style as well. I spent four years in engineering school and my prose has suffered as a result of it. And so I think the more I can get my hands on, the better. And the final question is, what does my book collection look like? I did a full bookshelf tour a little while ago and for the most part, it's still pretty accurate. So I'll put a link on the screen somewhere so you can go watch that. Um, but I've been doing a lot of gesturing so far in this video. But uh, for a quick rundown, um, Indie books, generic fiction, that everything on the shelf is stuff I've already read. Um, these are all my classics, or other things that didn't fit anywhere else. This is all nonfiction. Sanderson and other short stuff that only fits on the shelf. But notebooks, down here you can't see, but it's all just notebooks and binders. And then over here, you can't really see it, but that's my TBR. Um, these shelves are shelves that my little brother made for me. He's a carpenter, he's 14, and he made both of these himself um, with the help of a family friend of ours that's been teaching him. So when I first moved into this apartment, he made one of these as a moving out gift, and then another one of these as a Christmas gift, which I am really appreciative of. And they're looking a little empty right now just because I left most of my books at home when I moved last year. Um, because I still have a 14 year old brother and a little sister at home and I wanted to leave most of my books with them to, that for, with them so that they could enjoy them. Um, I've read all of those and so it's their turn to read them and love them as much as I did. And so I really only brought out the books that I knew they wouldn't want, like the classics in Sanderson. Um, or the books that I haven't read yet. So I'll be filling up these shelves eventually, but I don't really believe in buying books just for the sake of owning books, especially when I mostly read audiobooks. Um, if they're just gonna sit around and collect dust, I primarily read through the library. I rent books over Libby, I don't have an Audible subscription, and so I think that's the most sustainable way to consume literature, at least for me. Um, and so, other than that, I mainly buy books whenever my indie author friends are releasing something new. I'll either get an ARC review, and then if I end up liking it, I'll buy a paperback copy. So that's the main way that I buy books, and that's how my collection is looking so far. Um, and I'm hoping to fill up these shelves one day with books of my own and books by my friends. So, and all of my favorites. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me ramble, and I hope that you hang in there for all of the interviews that I have coming up and do listen through the backlog if you're interested in hearing some from some really cool folks. Um, I hope that you're ready to come along this journey with me, and uh, thank you again for listening. Um, have a nice day.